May 2003. My life is going on as it seemingly always has. Picture framer, living my life, reading books. Everything is the same except the books that I'm reading. So let's just jump right in because we're starting off strong. First book I read in May of 2003 is Battle Royale by Koushun Takami. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, a lot of people familiar with this book? I'm guessing most of my viewers are familiar with this book, or, or the movie, based on this book. Uh, so, it's about a junior high school class. It's dystopian future in Japan. 42 students from a junior high school class are essentially kidnapped and forced to kill each other. That's the quickest way to put it. Um, so, uh, you know, we get an explanation of what this world is like and these uh, this class of students taken, I believe they're on an island, and it's they, they're each given a, a survival bag that's going to have a weapon in it of some sort and a map because the island is a grid and there are certain areas that are going to come off limits. They all have explosive collars. And if they're in an off limits, excuse me, area, their heads are going to blow up. Well, the collars will blow up. And the, the weapons in their bags, like one, I think one dude gets a fork. Someone else gets a submachine gun. Um, so... Just all this wildness, and it's just a matter. They have to kill each other off till there's one survivor. Um, great, great movie. I think one of the reasons I like the book a little more is in the movie, they're high school students, and it's just insane that they're junior high school kids in the book. Um, and, you know, it's more detailed, and uh, it's just a fantastic book. Battle Royale by Koushun Takami or however you pronounce his name. But I highly recommend it. The movie and the book both. After that, I read Lynched by Ed Gorman, another Western from Ed Gorman. And our main character is Marshall Ben Tully. He's been out of town. He rides back into town, finds his wife dead, and a man hanged. And so, you know, he's told his wife was murdered. They lynched the man that did it. But that man's sister comes to town and says, says there's no way he did it. And uh, Ben Tully isn't so sure about it either. So he investigates. It's a murder, a Western murder mystery. Excuse me. Western murder mystery. And it's Ed Gorman. It's just good stuff. Then we move on to Groucho Marx's Secret Agent by Ron Goulart and... It takes place in 1939. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, director, I believe he's a director, Eric Olmsted, is found dead. It's ruled a suicide, but uh, it doesn't seem that that's actually the case. Groucho and his partner investigate, and because of the year that's taking place, there's uh, you know people are wondering if the United States is going to I don't know maybe enter into a war. Um, get involved in some conflicts overseas. And so the FBI gets involved. There's all sorts of shenanigans going on. I think there's another murder. And uh, it's and Groucho is Groucho. So it's a really fun, despite technically some darker subject matter, it's still a fun, funny mystery. Then we have The Graveyard Shift by Jack Higgins. He steps away from his international thrillers to write sort of a cops and robbers book. Um, so we have a thief named Ben Garvold who's been released from prison and he's returning home, but his ex-wife and his sister, basically anybody that knows him is not happy about the fact that he's coming home. And then we have Des Detective Sergeant Nick Miller. Uh, coincidentally, I have a nephew named Nick Miller. He is not a detective sergeant. Uh... But uh, Detective Sergeant Nick Miller is tasked with um, keeping, a, keeping an eye on Garvold and sort of protecting his ex-wife and sister because 
they're afraid he's going to come after them and they want police protection. But he also, uh, Detective Sergeant, wants to find the money from Garbled's last heist. It was never recovered. And then there's another cop that wants all the glory for himself and he doesn't care who he has to trample on. Um, so, I mean, again, it's Jack Higgins, so I enjoyed it. Uh, but it's different from his usual stuff, which is usually bigger uh, stories, espionage and secret agents and things. And this is just a cop story. Nothing wrong with that. It was well written and entertaining. It's all that matters. But that's The Graveyard Shift by Jack Higgins. After that, we have... Angel, The Longest Night, Volume 1, and this is simply a collection of short stories based on the TV show Angel. Uh, there are 12 stories, and you have authors like Nancy Holder, Christopher Golden, Jeff Marriott, Yvonne Navarro, and just to name some. And it's just, as I said, just a bunch of short stories with Angel, Cordelia, Wesley, Fred, Gunn, all the characters from the TV show Angel. And, you know, different stories may spotlight different characters. If you're a fan of the show, fun, fun stuff to read. All right, now we're going to get controversial. Because the next book is Ain't It Cool by Harry Knowles with Paul Cullum and Mark Ebner. Uh, and controversial because Harry Knowles uh, turns out to be a rather controversial person. But uh, he started... Uh, the, the book is um, a biography or autobiographical with a bunch of just Hollywood insider stuff. So we learn we learn about Harry Knowles' uh, childhood, his family, his growing up, how he started. Ain't it cool? News dot com, uh, and ain't it cool comes from uh, Broken Arrow, uh, which is a Christian Slater, John Travolta movie, and I believe John Travolta is the one that, during an exchange of dialogue, says, ain't it cool? Uh, but this, uh, and ain't it cool was a website that like got this, the Hollywood scoop. And um, apparently uh, one studio tried to uh, have it shut down because they didn't like what was being said. You know, their dirty laundry being aired. Um, when he reviewed Batman and Robin before the movie came out, the studio blamed his negative review on how poorly the movie did, apparently. But, um, so again, it's about Harry Knowles, and it's about all this, uh, the ins and outs of Hollywood, the stuff that you don't normally hear about, stuff from ain't it cool news .com. Uh But this was before, uh, it turned out maybe Harry Knowles wasn't the greatest person in the world. Although some people would have said, even back then, that he wasn't. But there's some things that have come out, some accusations made. Um, but, either way, Ain't It Cool, Harry Knowles with Paul Cullum and Mark Ebner. If you're just interested in Hollywood as, a, as an entity, as a company, I mean, it's still, despite what Harry Knowles may or may not have done, still an interesting book. Oh, by the way, let's go back in time a little bit. I do have a copy of Battle Royale. It is just deeply buried. It would have probably taken me at least half an hour to dig it out. Uh, and I didn't feel like doing that. And that's why I didn't show you. The reason I realized I hadn't mentioned that is because I do have a copy of the next book, which is The Getaway Man by Andrew Vax. Look at that wonderful cover. This is from... This is a Vintage Crime Black Lizard original. Black Lizard puts out some great crime noir books. Uh, this is about a guy named Eddie who, it says, started stealing cars long before he's old enough to get a license. Um, after stints in juvie, stints in prison, he goes to work um, for JC, a near legendary hijacker. So Eddie becomes essentially the, the getaway driver and, uh, JC is now planning that retirement score. The one big heist that's going to allow everybody to quit their life of crime. 
but of course it's noir. There's going to be twists and turns. It's Andrew Vax, so it's written in sparse prose. Uh, not as dark as like the Burke series and some of the other stuff he writes. It is definitely more in that or absolutely in that vein of classic noir like Jim Thompson kind of stuff um but uh yeah just a fantastic book I just recently got this copy um and something I would love to read again relatively soon I'm still trying to work like rereads in every once in a while despite all the many many things that I haven't read yet but the Getaway Man by Andrew Vax. Fantastic book. After that, we have The Last Defense by Christopher Darden and Dick Locht. Lochte? Locht L-O-C-H-T-E. Uh, Christopher Darden uh, was a prosecutor on the O.J. Simpson case, apparently. And uh, in this book, our main character is Mercer Early. He's a lawyer at a African-American law firm. And it's... <laughs> Not adventures, but the, the stuff, crime. It's it's a legal thriller, but there's, like, Mercer has to, def is hired to defend a racist cop. And meanwhile, there's another cop who whose weapon was used in a crime because he lost his badge and gun when he was drunk at a bar. And there's lots of sex and violence and politics and all sorts of stuff one might say even an insider's view of the LA legal system I don't really remember too much about this but and I think it's part of a series I think there are other books with Mercer Early but I don't think I read any of them but if you want a, a wild legal thriller The Last Defense Christopher Darden and Christopher Darden and Dick Lochte. Is how I'm going with that. Then we have Darkest Heart by Nancy A. Collins. This is a Sonia Blue novel. Sonia Blue is a uh, living vampire, kind of like Morbius. Um, she was bitten, but the vampire that did it didn't like finish the transformation ritual, so she never died, but she has vampire inside her. She needs blood. But she's also a vampire hunter. She wants to destroy all vampires. Uh, in this book, there is a human dude who is a vampire hunter. And his target right now is Sonya Blue. And then there's this ancient vampire that she's targeting. So, you know, all of this is going to come together. The Sonya Blue books are great. And this one was published by White Wolf, for what it's worth. Beautiful hardcover is what I used to have. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you like vampires and other monsters and half human, half vampire characters that are hunting monsters, check out the Sonya Blue books and Darkest Heart by Nancy A. Collins. After that, we have The Books of Magic, The Invitation by Carla Jablonski. This is a novelization, a young adult novelization of the original Books of Magic miniseries created by Neil Gaiman and John Bolton. And I believe there have been other Books of Magic books on this list. I don't know why I read those before I read the first one. Although I'd read the comics, so it's not like I was confused. Anyway, it's all about a 13-year-old British boy named Timothy Hunter who is told he is going to be perhaps the greatest sorcerer of all time. And he has an owl companion. And he wears glasses. Does that sound familiar? I always say... Uh, that a certain woman with two initials and then a last name stole the idea for a certain boy wizard um, because the Books of Magic came out quite a bit before uh, the Harry Potter books. But anyway, um, so in this, you uh, Timothy Hunter, typical 13-year-old British kid, and then he's approached by, I had to write all this down, uh, John Constantine, Mr. E, Dr. Occult, and The Stranger, and they're going to explain to him the world of magic in DC Comics and his place in it, and there's lots of time traveling and dimension hopping and people after Timothy Hunter and a twist, and uh, 
other magical characters are going to show up. I know Zatanna is uh, is shows up, and it was a four originally a four issue miniseries, prestige format, beautiful artwork, and um, this again, this is just the novelization of it, and it's it's fun if you if you like the characters. I don't have the comics anymore, and I don't have these books anymore, but I would reread both. Um, actually, just as an aside, I relatively recently bought uh, th- the three, vo- three volumes of the Vertigo comic book Shade the Changing Man on eBay, the original Vertigo book by Peter Milligan. Uh, ordered the first three volumes, and the seller threw in a Books of Magic trade paperback but it's like the second volume of books of magic and it's it's about a magic war so it's like i think i don't remember books of magic or the war part is the subtitle anyway it, it's completely new to me i've never read it before so i have some books of magic stuff to read anyway all right uh so the books of magic the invitation carla jablonski after that smallville Who Done It by dean wesley smith And in this book, based on the TV show Smallville, Clark, Lana, and Chloe are searching for a missing friend when they discover a gruesome murder of an entire family. And meanwhile, Lex Luthor's dad, Lionel Luthor, is brazenly kidnapped in the middle of the day. And so you've got Clark and Lex both kind of, well, both working on their own things. Clark wants to figure out who killed this family. Lex wants to save his father. Are their paths going to cross? Are they going to have to work together? Well, you're going to have to read the book to find out, but if you're a fan of Smallville, uh, Dean Wesley Smith is is a good author, and uh, anything that puts a lot of focus on, on Lex and Lionel, I'm up for that. Smallville, Who Done It by Dean Wesley Smith. Then we have Something from the Night Side by Simon R. Green. This is the first in what I believe is a 12-book series of the Night Side. And this, the main character is John Taylor. These are urban fantasy. John Taylor is a private detective in London. I believe it's in London. But he is from something called the Night Side, which is a dark mirror version i don't know if mirror version is the right word or what right way to put it but a dark version of london it's like a square mile and it's one of those things where you have to like slip sideways through a shadow to get there that kind of thing if you know what i'm saying uh but anyway john taylor's private eye but is he's actually from the night side originally from the night side so he has a special ability where he can find anything um so in this first book he's working as a pi in london this rich woman comes to him looking for her teenage daughter. He takes the case. It's going to lead him back to the night side where there's monsters and magic and darkness and all sorts of craziness. I really enjoyed this book. I, I had, didn't finish the series, but you're going to see a few more of them on here. And I would like to pick up all 12 books and read the entire series at some point. Um, but I like the character of John Taylor because you're mixing... Well, as I said, it's urban fantasy, so it's got that magical private eye in a world of monsters kind of thing going on, which I enjoy if it's well done. And with Simon Green, I think he puts some genuine scares into these books. Uh, a lot of urban fantasy that I've read is is fun and maybe some creepy stuff, you know, and it's, oh, there's monsters, but... I don't know, something about the way Simon R. Green writes, uh, it just felt darker and scarier. So that's Something from the Night Side by Simon R. Green, the first in the series, uh, and we're going to see more of these. The penultimate book in, where, where are we? May of 2003 was Dark Angel Skin Game by Max Allen Collins, based on the TV show Dark Angel. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, so in Dark Angel, you've got... Uh, it takes place essentially in Seattle. And within Seattle is Terminal City. Terminal City is where the transgenics live. Hopefully I have this right. I never actually watched the show. Uh, 
the transgenics who are basically mutants. Come on, who are we fooling? Um, they live in Terminal City, don't get along with normals. So in this book, uh, in Seattle, there's a bunch of gruesome murders. At the same time in Terminal City, Terminal City is kind of under siege by normal cops because it's that whole, again, to go X-Men or mutants, you know, humans don't like mutants. Mutants are dangerous. Mutants are different. Um, but it turns out that maybe these murders that are being committed in Seattle are being done by a transgenic. So our main character, Max, who is uh, was played by Jessica Alba on the show, um, has to investigate, has to figure out, is it because, you know, if it turns out, <coughs> if it's discovered that a transgenic is committing these murders, this pot is going to boil over. So there you go. That's basically all that's going on. Uh, wasn't a fan of the show. Didn't watch it. Don't hate it. Don't like it because I don't know it. But I do like Max Allen Collins. Uh, so it is a well-written story. If you're a fan of the show, I really think it's something you would enjoy. If you're not familiar with the show, someone like me, uh, but you like a well-written story with interesting characters, then, I mean, you could still pick it up and read it. Dark Angel, Skin Game, Max Allen Collins. And then finally, some might say we're ending on a, a downer note. We started strong with Battle Royale, an absolutely fantastic book, a five out of five star book. Now we're ending with a little nonfiction, Slayer Slang, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer lexicon by Michael Adams. Uh, now this isn't necessarily as bad as you might think. Because not only is it essentially like a dictionary of, of the slang used on Buffy the Vampire Slayer with plenty of examples, actual dialogue from the show and things, but it does examine language and how it changes and how words become part of the everyday vernacular. Uh, so it's not as bad as it might seem. It's not a, just a piece of fluff. It goes a little bit deeper, um, which is what pulls me in. I mean, I, again, I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Anyone who has watched these videos, especially the last 12 or however many that have all the Buffy the Vampire Slayer media tie-in books, uh, they know I was a Buffy fan. Um, so, you know, it's something I was interested in, but less for the, for the slang itself and more for the look at... Again, language and how it changes and and all of that stuff. The actual, the stuff that, um, oh, oh, the woman on Countdown and 8 out of 10 cats, cats does Countdown. I can picture her perfectly and I've forgotten her name. She is, she's a linguist, linguistic expert. I don't know what you would call her. She knows words and stuff. She has a ton of book books. Apparently, I can't speak words. She has a bunch of books about, again, language and and words and the things I'm no good at all of a sudden. Um, Susie Dent, that's it. Yes, Susie Dent. Um, so she has all these books on language and things. I'm reminded of this. Uh, it wouldn't have been surprising if Susie Dent had written this, but she probably, I don't know if she cares about Buffy. But um, I, I like that language history and stuff. <laughs> wow. Anyway, that is the last book that I read in May of 2003. Slayer Slang, a Buffy the Vampire Slayer lexicon by Michael Adams. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's it. That's everything in May of 2003. And... Oh, question for the video. Uh, let's go with Battle Royale. Have you read the book? Have you read the manga? Have you seen the movie? There's a sequel movie that I've never read, uh, seen, excuse me. Uh, but there's plenty of comic book and manga stuff out there. And uh, what do you know about it? Uh, do you think... Uh, <laughs> Here's another thing. I talked about Books of Magic and J.K. Rowling stealing Harry Potter from that. 
Um, I've always jokingly said that the Hunger Games is just a ripoff of Battle Royale. Um, someone took me, someone with no sense of humor yelled at me when I said that once. But um, anyway, I'm a huge fan of the book, huge fan of the movie. I've already expressed both of those things. I even have a book that will eventually come up on this in one of these videos that's a collection of essays about the book and I believe the movies. I don't think it's all just about the book. Um, or all just about the movies. That one, I know exactly where that is. That's not buried. I thought about just pulling that to show, but it's not the book that I was talking about, so I didn't do that. But anyway, have you seen the movie? Have you read the book? Have you read the comics? What do you think of it? It was controversial when it came out in Japan. Uh, do you consider it controversial? Do you, uh, do you think it's better that it's high school students in the movie? Or that it's junior high school students in the book, or don't you think the age matters? Uh, let me know all that. Let's talk Battle Royale in the comments below. If you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put those in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe, all the usual YouTube stuff. And if you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronan5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith5757. That's Eric with a K, E R I K S M I T H 5757. If you're on Blue Sky, I am at EL Smith. And that is all I have for you this week. So until next week, read more books.